As was mentioned a moment ago, we, we come this evening to the end of Psalm 69 and verses 30 to 36. And it's often noted that many of the Psalms begin on a note of pain and end on a note of joy. In many of the Psalms, we, we find this, this movement take place. That the psalmist begins by expressing his, his pain, but ends rejoicing in the Lord. And that is not just the, the pattern of many of the Psalms, but that is the pattern and direction of the Christian life. There are many times in the Christian life that we suffer pain. But where does it end? It ends in the joy and the delight and the praise of heaven. The Apostle Paul said that, that through many tribulations we must enter the the kingdom of heaven. And Psalm 69 is one of the psalms that, that follows that, that pattern. It begins with David in deep waters, crying out to the Lord for help. For verses 1 and 2, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the waters. The floods engulf me. David is sinking. He's, he's in despair. And yet the psalm ends with David praising God. Verse 30, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. And so this pattern was seen in, in David's life. Pain, trouble, despair, but, but giving way to, to praise. And that was the pattern of David's life. And to some extent, it's the pattern of every Christian life because it was the pattern of Jesus' life. Jesus Christ, the Savior, passed through deep waters. He passed through deep waters during his life here on earth. He, he passed through the deep waters of Gethsemane and, and Calvary and, and death on a cross before being raised to, to, to life and exalted to heaven. And so it is for those united to him. One of the hymns we, we sometimes sing, Thomas Kelly's hymn about Jesus' death and exaltation, the, the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. And later on that hymn says of Christ's people, they suffer with their Lord below, they reign with him above. The Christian life is a life of great joy. But there are many deep waters along the way. Many deep waters that we have to pass through before we reach heaven and, and the praises of heaven. So, so Psalm 69, it, it follows this pattern as, as many of the Psalms do. It begins in deep waters, ends in praise. And that can be used as a, a picture for us of the, the, the direction of the, of the Christian life. We, we, we suffer here and now, but we're, we're moving towards the, the, the glory and the praise and the joy of heaven. But, but there's more to it than that. Because David wrote this psalm, and Jesus Christ sang this psalm, <laughs> while still living here on earth. David wrote these words of praise, and Jesus Christ sang these words of praise while still passing through the deep waters of life here on earth. 
And the Christian life will end with the praises of heaven. But we do not wait for heaven before we start praising God. For the Lord's people, the praise of God begins here and now and and takes place even as we pass through deep waters. Last week we we sang that that, that hymn based upon Psalm 34. Through, Through all the changing scenes of life in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my, my heart and soul employ. Even in the midst of the troubles, the, the deep waters of this life, we, we praise our God. And so this closing section of the psalm begins, verse 30, with the words, I will praise God's name. I will praise God's name. What does that mean? What what does the word praise actually mean? It's one of those words that that we use all of the time, isn't it? We probably use it every time we we meet together. I I don't know, I haven't counted, but we, we probably use the word praise every time we meet together. We probably use it on many occasions during the course of, of one service. As we sing and pray and hear God's word, but, but, but what does it mean? What, what, what do we do when we, when we praise the Lord? Well, one, one Hebrew dictionary says of the word that's used here, that it means to praise, celebrate, glory, sing, boast. Another Hebrew dictionary says of the word used here that it is to shine or to to make to shine, to give forth a clear and distinct sound, to make illustrious, glorious, to celebrate. And so to praise God is to, in a clear and focused and thoughtful way, glory and celebrate in who he is and in all that he has done. It is to make God and the things he has done shine forth. And the Lord's people do that in heaven. But they begin to do it here on earth. Uh, And in this closing section of the psalm from verse 30 to to 36, there there are certain things we learn about the praise of the Lord's people. Uh, And the first thing for for us to think about is this. It's it's joyful praise. Joyful praise. Uh, And we get a sense of that from the way that that God is praised here. Verse 30 again. I will praise God's name in, in song. David sang God's praise. That's what this psalm is. That's what the other psalms are. They are songs of of praise to God. And we often associate singing with with joy, don't we? You know, you you hear some singing coming from the kitchen and you say, oh, somebody's happy today. And God's people sing his praise because... Because they are a happy people. They are a a joyful people. God has loved them. God has saved them from sin and hell and brought them to know him. And they are filled with joy, filled with with happiness. In one of his other psalms, Psalm 4, that David says this in verse 7. He says to the Lord, you have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. You filled my heart with joy, David says. And here then he says, I will praise God's name in song. And we see here in Psalm 69 that there's something contagious about this. Now, when we think of the word contagious, we we often think of bad things, don't we? 
Uh, we, we, we think of diseases that, that can spread. You hear that someone's unwell, or is it contagious, we say. But good things, good things can be contagious too. Uh, and as David praises God, in the midst of deep waters, as he praises God, confident and thankful to God for, for deliverance from, from deep waters, he, he says that, that other people will see this and, and will be glad. Verse 32, he says in verse 30, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. And then th verse 32, the poor will see. They'll see me praise God's name in song. They'll see me glorify him with thanksgiving and they will be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. Other people would see David praising God, praising God with joy. And they too would, would praise God with joy. And their hearts would be revived and, and refreshed. We, we always need to bear in mind the influence that we have upon others. And the way that the, the attitude that we carry and the attitude that we display can be contagious. And so, if somebody is a miserable Christian, <laughs> other Christians around them can become <coughs> miserable. And if somebody is a joyful Christian, then other Christians around them become joyful. And such joyful praise pleases the Lord. Think of people in David's day going to the tabernacle and offering sacrifices to the Lord. And some of them just went through the motions as they did this. But the Lord took more pleasure in those who, who praised him joyfully. Verses 30 and 31, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him in, with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hoofs. So here we have David. He's been passing through these, these deep waters, but he says, I will praise God's name with song. He's, he's joyfully praising the Lord. And we've seen, haven't we, over, the, over these past weeks, time and again, the way this psalm is, is quoted in the New Testament, the way it, it points us beyond David to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was a man of praise who joyfully praised his father. It's, it's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? Jesus is, this, is a man of sorrows. He's, we're told he was a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, and yet at the same time, he was a man of joy. Who joyfully praised his father. Listen to the, these lovely words about, about the Lord Jesus found in, in Luke chapter 10 and, and verse 21. At that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to, to little children. Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father. Jesus was a man of, of joyful praise. And the night before he died then, as he was passing through the, the deepest of waters, he praised his Father. We're told in Matthew's Accounts of Jesus being with the disciples in, in, the, in, the, in the upper room the night before he died, that they, they sang a, a hymn. They sang a, a psalm together. They, they, they sang God's praise. Jesus sang his Father's praise, even as he was about to go to Calvary. And, and, we, and we praise him. We, we praise our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we, 
we join him in, in praising his Father. We, we praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we praise him with joy, for, for he is our God, the, the, the God of our salvation. But we know we don't always praise God as joyfully as we should. Sometimes we struggle to, to praise God with, with joy. Are, are there things we can do? Are, are, there, are there steps we can take to, to help us praise God more, more joyfully? Let me very briefly mention some very simple things. Think, think about what God has done for you in Jesus Christ. Think about the Savior's love. Think about his death upon the cross. Think about all the blessings that are yours in him. And spend time, spend time with and, and praise God with, with joyful Christians. And pray for the presence and the help of the Holy Spirit. For we're told, aren't we, in Galatians chapter 5, that the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joyful praise. But then secondly, we have thankful praise. Verse 30 again, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Now, joy and thanksgiving are closely connected. And thanksgiving in praise is, is a right and fitting response to, to who God is and all that he's, he's done for us. Verse 33, we read of how the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his, his captive people. How, how thankful we are for that, that the Lord hears the needy. If you're a Christian this evening, you, you think back to when you were first saved. Perhaps it was a, a very definite point. Perhaps it was a very gradual thing, but you, you called out to the Lord. You called to him. You, you saw your sin, your dirt, your need, and you, you called to the Lord to, to forgive you, to save you, to, to wash you. And what did he do? He heard. He heard your calls. He, he, he heard your cries. The Lord hears the needy. And so we, we glorify with thanksgiving. We're, we're so thankful that the Lord hears the cries of the needy. And David then, and other needy people who, who cried out to the Lord, they, they glorify him with, with thanksgiving. And this psalm then, it, it gives us an example, a, a, a pattern of, of thanksgiving to follow. But thanksgiving is also a command. It, it's something that we are commanded to do in the Scriptures. In the New Testament, in, in 1 Thessalonians and, and chapter 5, in verses 16 to, to 22 of, of that chapter, the Apostle Paul gives, in seven verses, eight quick-fire instructions. In Thessalonians 5, 8, 16, be joyful always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. Bang, 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 bang. You're to do this. You're to do this. You're to do this. Be joyful always. Pray continually. And then we have the instruction, give thanks. It's a simple instruction given to the church of Thessalonica, given to all churches at all times. Give thanks. 
It's a, it's a mark of a, a church. It's a mark of a Christian that they, that they give thanks. But there's, there's more to it than that. Paul doesn't just say give thanks. He says give thanks in all circumstances. We, we, we've seen over these past weeks that the circumstances of Psalm 69 are, are the believer passing through deep waters. And we're told there in Thessalonians to give thanks in all circumstances, to give thanks even as we pass through those deep waters. Even as we go through deep waters, that there is so much for us to, to give thanks to God for. But then Paul takes it even further than that. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's a question, isn't it, that people ask? People often ask that question. What's God's will? What's God's will for me? What's God's will for my life? What's God's will for me in, in this situation? What's God's will for me as somebody who is, who is in Christ Jesus? Well, well he, we're told here in, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and, and verse, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances for, for this is God's will for you in, in Christ Jesus. It's God's will that we should be thankful people. We, we thank him for so many things. We, we thank him for our material provisions, of course. Oh, but we, we thank him for so much more than that. We thank him for his love towards us. We, we thank him for his grace towards us. We, we thank him for the work of Jesus Christ on our behalf. We, we thank him that Jesus Christ passed through the deep waters of Calvary to, to save us from them and to bring us to God. We, we, we thank him that he has adopted us as, as his children uh, and, and so we could go on. When, when, when we praise God, there's a, a sense in which we, we could say we're, we're, we're doing the work of angels. The angels praise God. In the book of Revelation, we find the angels praising God. On the night that Jesus was born in those fields just outside Bethlehem, the, the heavenly host of angels appeared to the shepherds praising God. We, we, we join with the angels when we praise God. But we can praise God in a way that the angels can't. Because the angels are sinless beings. The angels have not tasted salvation from sin. But we, we have tasted that. Salvation through the, the work of Jesus Christ. And we can praise God thankful that we are saved from our sins at, at great cost. So we have here joyful praise and we have thankful praise. But thirdly, we have at the end of the psalm here united praise. United praise. This is not just David praising God. It's not just you or me praising God. It's not even just our church praising God. The praise of God that we read of here is, is bigger than that. This is the people of God. It's the whole people of God. The, the whole church of Jesus Christ praising God together. In verses 35 and 36, David writes about Zion and, and Judah. God will save Zion and rebuild the, the cities of Judah. 
Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it. And those who love his name will dwell there. David speaks of Zion and Judah, the cities be, being, being rebuilt. And many people, those who love the Lord's name, living there and, and praising him there. Now, David may well have been thinking literally of, of people living in, in Jerusalem and the, the towns and cities of Judah and, and praising the Lord together. But his words here point us to something much, much bigger than that. Because we're told in the, in the New Testament that Zion, Jerusalem, is a picture of the church of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. You have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. church of Jesus Christ praises God. The church of Jesus Christ praises God here on earth. And it, as it does that, it glorifies God and, and shines forth the, the beauty of God. The church of Jesus Christ praises God here on earth even as it, as it passes through deep waters. And as we come together, we, we praise God together. We share together in, in joyfully thanking him for all that he has done, for all that he is. We, we are just a, a small gathering. Some churches are, are smaller still. Yes, whenever... Church, if Jesus Christ gathers together to praise the Lord, there is something heavenly about it. It's a, a foretaste of heaven. For heaven is where Jesus' people are. Heaven is where they, they praise him with joy and thanksgiving without any of the, the constraints and, and distractions that are, that are caused by, by sin and, and by living in this world here and now. And when Jesus Christ returns and everything is made new, then the whole creation will praise him. In verse 34 it says, Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. We began our service this evening by, by reading about the, the praise of heaven. And the, the, the book of Revelation gives some Glorious descriptions of the, of the praise of heaven. Um, Revelation chapter 5, verse, verse 9, they, they sang a new song. You were worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, worthy is the lamb who was slain. To receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. <coughs> Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, 
from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 15, I saw in heaven another great and marvellous sign. Seven angels with the seven last plagues. Last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvellous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord? And bring glory to your name, for you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. And then where we began our service this evening, chapter 19, I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. The praises of heaven, the praises of, of the church, the, the bride in heaven. And for the Lord's people here on earth, passing at times through the deepest of waters, That is where everything is heading. Is, is that where you are heading? Come to Jesus Christ, that one who passed through the deep waters of Calvary to pay the penalty for sin. Come to him and you, you believe in him. Come to him, believe in him and be saved from your sin. Forgiven your sin. And then begin a life. An eternity. Of joyful, thankful praise. With all the Lord's people.